Hi, I'm Chetna Makan here in the Food 52 studio, back with another delicious recipe. I am making a mango and coconut Boston cream pie. And no, it's not actually a pie, it's a fantastic cake. And I'm going to flavor it with some mango and coconut because that is a flavor combination made in heaven. So, First things first, I am going to get uh, some butter and coconut milk warmed up and melted. And now I'm going to let it rest for a minute, which will give me time to get the eggs and sugar started. So just some sugar and eggs. And I'm going to whisk it for a good four to five minutes until it's fluffy and kind of incorporated a lot of air into it. Um, so now I'm going to bring all the dry ingredients together. So I've got some flour, a bit of baking powder, a pinch of salt and some desiccated coconut unsweetened. So it will be a nice light coconut cake. Just give it a mix. So sometimes it can be a bit tricky to get the mixture really voluminous because it's not a lot of mixture and the whisk can't get to the bottom of the bowl. But a little bit of elbow grease and I'm going to add some vanilla to this. And again, just a quick whisk. And then our dry ingredients can go in. I'm going to try and fold this in. And once the dry ingredients are mixed, I'm going to add the melted butter and coconut milk. It's a really light sponge. You can make one big sponge, uh, but it's quite tricky to cut it in half. So best to make two sponges and then just sandwich them. So I've got the cake tins oil lined up, greased and ready. And the cake mixture is looking pretty good. So I'm going to try and divide this as equally as possible between these two cake tins. And these will now go straight in the oven to bake. Now to make the custard, I'm going to get some milk and some mango puree into the pan. And just heat it through. And that will give me enough time to whisk the egg and sugar. So I've just got some egg yolks and some sugar. And then we just whisk it for a couple of minutes until it's pale and fluffy. Just going to add a pinch of salt and some vanilla and also some corn flour and that will help us thicken the custard. So once it's kind of warmed up slightly, just gonna pour this into the eggs. Make sure to whisk continuously, otherwise um, you'll have scrambled eggs in this bowl. Then a good whisk and back into the pan. And now lower the heat and then just cook for three to four minutes until it's really nice and thick. So you have to be patient with this and don't cook this on really high heat, otherwise you will get scrambled egg. And it's taken me a few minutes, but we're finally there. And it's, it's quite a thick custard. It's not a runny custard because we want to layer the cake with this, we want it slightly set and which is why I've added the cornstarch so it is a bit thicker. So once you've got to this stage, I'm going to sieve it 
through to a clean bowl. And then this needs to cool down completely. Now you really don't need to sieve this, but uh, passing it through the sieve will just give you a smooth consistency in case there are any lumps in there. If you are not a fan of mango, which sounds weird even saying, you can make a plain vanilla custard for this cake or you could add some other spice to it if you want to change the flavor combination. No, I have never had um, Boston cream pie growing up or in the UK actually. So this was very, very new to me. Um, but, you know, looking at what this pie has, a lovely sponge, amazing custard cream and some chocolate on top. Yeah, I don't think anyone would not like this. It's just tick, tick, tick. I would like to think that Victoria sponge is kind of the equivalent to Boston cream pie. Please don't kill me, Americans and Englishmen. Just, but I'm just thinking from a baker's point of view, that's plain sponge and it's got buttercream in the middle and a bit of jam and this one's got chocolate on top, so. Yeah, simple classic stuff. Okay, so this is ready. I'm just gonna cover it with some plastic uh, film and then let it cool down completely before I make a custard cream for layering. The custard has cooled down and I'm now going to prepare the cream. Starting with the cream. Gonna add some sugar to this. And just a pinch of salt. And some custard, uh, no actually, that's mango puree. Just whisk. Right, it only takes a few minutes and the cream is looking fantastic. And here is the cool down custard. Just loosen it up. This is such a dangerous cream. I would suggest that you don't taste it right now before you add it to the cake because there'll be nothing left for the cake. I can easily just take a spoon and eat this whole thing on its own. Oof. So we just fold this in. And if you think it's not mixing well, you can always use the whisk. Mango, custard, cream, what's not to like? It's uh, heavenly. So the cream is ready. It's smooth, it's light, it's lovely. I can move on to the chocolate ganache. And now to the ganache, which is super simple. All we need is some cream and chocolate. And I'm going to just heat up the cream, just very lightly, hot enough to melt the chocolate. And here I've got some dark chocolate, 70% cocoa. And this will only take a couple of minutes to heat up. So you can just see the bubbles on the sides and that's when we know that the cream is ready for the chocolate. So just pour it on top and then the heat from the cream will melt the chocolate. And I'm also just going to add a pinch of salt. That's not a really deep brown colour, it's changing actually. And now that we have the ganache ready, we've got the cream ready, it's time to assemble the cake. I am like a kid in a chocolate shop, like a candy store, because this is <laughs> heavenly to me. I love donuts, but I've just seen what an amazing range of flavors. <laughs> oh my God, just Thank so, you. so amazing. How do you come up with the ideas? I'm like, from Mexico. Yeah. And uh, when I first started making donuts, my, um, an old boss from France, and he said, I have this idea to open a donut shop. And I thought, it's so funny. There's a, a you know French guy, Mexican girl, making a quintessential American treat. And so the donuts that, that I make is sort of 
because I, I, I really wanted to make a donut that could stand on its own. Like yes. even a naked donut is, is delicious. For the flavors itself, for me, the problem is editing. I'm always just like, my mind is just always going, but there's a few sort of philosophies, like never any colorings, never any flavorings. Um, all natural. All natural. So here are just a few. The mango lassi, oh, of yes. course. The Iranian love donut, a classic vanilla bean glaze. This is our churros and chocolate. This is guava and cheese, and it has a brown butter walnut crumble. Boston cream uh, with candied cocoa nibs. The bakes I'm doing with the American bakes that I'm doing right now, um, I am trying to add that little touch, personal touch to it, my own touch to it, which is why all of this is yeah. just <laughs> so, so amazing. Everything looks um, a masterpiece in itself. <laughs> Thank like, you. Just, I don't even want to eat them. I just want to look at them like they're so pretty. So I'm going to start with the mango lassi because yes, I have course. to start with the mango lassi. Yeah. And um, so for the mango lassi, you know, it's mango, of course, it has a, a lot of cardamom mm -hmm. and then it has a yogurt glaze on top with the pistachios. Mm. <laughs> it's even better than I thought. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. That oh. means a lot coming from you. <laughs> the mango lassi. That is beautiful. Oh. But I've heard so much about the guava. The cheese. guava and cheese, yes. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. <gasps> it's full. Yeah, oh. so this is like a cream cheese filling and it's a, the cream cheese we get is from, you know, this, these farms upstate New York. It, it makes a huge difference. I want to take a, a suitcase full of these home. They are so good. Um, so but. I have to talk to you about the Boston cream pie because we have done a Boston cream cake, pie, cake. And uh, so this is filled with custard or is it filled with cream? Uh, pastry cream. Pastry vanilla, cream. vanilla bean pastry cream. Okay. Yeah. Just, and then it's dipped in uh, Valrona uh, dark chocolate and just the vanilla glaze and the candied um, cocoa nibs on top. Mm -hmm. So is this your first Boston cream donut? Yes. Oh, oh well, my god, yes. And it's know. so, um, I love, I love experimenting and mis mixing flavors. But at the same time, I also like that there are classic elements yes. to it, where it's just the vanilla pastry cream with the chocolate on top, yeah. but in a donut form. So you've added your twist, but yeah. it's delicious, absolutely oh, I'm delicious. I'm so happy, I'm so excited I to try am it. in um, <laughs> donut heaven. So we are going to put the first cake on top. If your cakes get a little dome, then I would suggest you just slice off the top. Right now the cakes are perfectly fine for me, so I'm going to go straight in with the custard cream. Now this is not really a set cream, so if it pours on the sides, that's absolutely fine. I think that's a good quantity of cream to cake ratio and then goes the second layer beautiful look at that and now the chocolate ganache so you could use half of this um, but uh, I only say that in case you don't want it dripping down on the sides but I definitely want that and whatever is excess will just sit next to the cake at the bottom. And I think that's fantastic. Just guide the chocolate to the sides. If you want, you can just leave it on the top, but I definitely want it sliding to the sides, tripping down. That's totally your preference. 
Is there enough dripping down? Yeah. And now comes the hardest part, letting it chill for a little bit. Now, if I was serving this just for myself, I'll dive straight in, but it's really tricky to slice this right now because everything is squidgy and soft and you just want it slightly set to be able to slice. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge for an hour and then slice it. And that's the cake set in the fridge. I actually left it for a couple of hours instead of just one. And now it's time to cut into it and enjoy it. And because it's set, it cuts easily. That's a decent side slice, isn't it? Not too big. Now, if mango is in season, I would 100% sprinkle some fresh mango on top. Um, and if you want to change and combine different fruits, you can make this with some raspberries as well because coconut, raspberry and chocolate is another fantastic combination. And that looks pretty good to me. Oh my God. <laughs> That's really is so good. <laughs> and because I've added fresh cream to the custard, it's not heavy and it's just, you can see it's still oozing out, which is just so good. Hope you will like this little twist on the classic Boston cream pie. The combination of mango and custard finished with chocolate is just so delicious. You can find the recipe on Food52 and you can also check out my YouTube channel, Food with Chetna. I'll be back next month with another exciting bake. Till then, bye-bye.